In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to hit more spells as a beginner wizard player. As someone who misses a ton of spells, yeah, a thousand hours later and I'm still not good. I decided to look through all of my footage to learn tips on how to hit more spells. I am mostly a solo player, so this will be geared towards 1v1 situations. And don't worry, this isn't the usual aim guide telling you to play aim trainer for hundreds of hours. This is more of a guide on reading players, whether it's looking at their movement or tendencies and using that knowledge to hit more spells. Everyone plays differently and these tips might not always work, especially on high level players, but I can guarantee at least one of these tips will work against other beginner or intermediate players. So basically most players you come across in normals. Anyways, let's talk about each wizard spell. But before that, I got an easy tip you can do right now. Go into your settings, go into video, and turn post processing to low. What this will do is it will turn down the brightness of your spells. You can see that zap and fireball are extremely bright and it's very distracting and it's hard to see what's going on. But if we turn it down, you can see it's much more visible. So let's go over the first spell, fireball. While fireball is a big AOE, it can still be missed or it can barely hit the enemy for a tiny bit of splash damage. Most people will just dodge in the opposite direction they're strafing. But sometimes you can force people to go a direction. We can fake people out by flicking the other direction as soon as we cast fireball. Sometimes this catches people at longer ranges or if somebody is moving straight at you. This tip is extremely relevant if you ever catch yourself in a 1v2 situation. You'll see in this clip that I'm aiming at the Barbarian and I switch at the last second to the Fighter and it ends up hitting him. Now I can isolate a 1v1 against the Barbarian and have a better chance of winning the 2v1. Another good tip is to fireball where people don't expect it. In the middle module of Goblin Caves, you can throw a fireball right underneath these wooden structures. A lot of people like to hide behind these to either heal or dodge spells. You can even cast fireball through these bars in the broken bridge module. Fireball is best used when you have the high ground. Always make sure you play at the highest points in each module to get free hits or even free headshots. And some people might not know this, but Fireball can hit people in Phantomized State or Dreamwalk. The next spell is Zap. Zap is a spell that's easier to hit than most because it's hit scan. So players will try to duck under Zap like this. So make sure you aim at the lower part of their body when you use Zap. There is no headshot multiplier with Zap, so there's no reason to aim high up. A good trick with Zap is to hold it for a second or two after it charges. While it's good to release it quickly so you can charge up another spell, this can lead to it being missed. If you have bad aim like me, of course. So in these clips here, you can see I hold out the charge, I see how the player moves, and I can adjust to it. A lot of people jump because it carries momentum. So in this clip, I'm going against the Warlock and I hold out my zap and I end up dodging his spell and I keep holding it and then he jumps to carry his momentum to cast another spell and I would have hit him, but then his head hit the ceiling and then I missed. But you get the point. The next spell is Explosion. If you plan on playing 10 spell, Explosion is an amazing spell to use. It acts like a sticky grenade and it's also hit scan. Explosion is great for getting players off of corners. Wizard struggles with players sitting in corners or playing behind pillars, so you can throw a couple explosions around the corner or doorway and get ready to hit the player once they come out. The next is Lightning Strike. The best tip to know is to not to use it, and this is why. Yeah, you can easily jump over it. And the radius is a lot smaller than it was pre-nerf. But if you do use it in 10 spell, try predicting whether the enemy is going to dodge it or not and just lead the lightning strike into them. And you can also hit somebody in Phantomize or Dreamwalk with lightning strike. The next spell is Ice Bolt. Ice Bolt is similar to Zap. People are going to duck it, so aim low. Ice Bolt is fairly easy to hit close range, so you don't have to worry about that. At medium and long range, this is where it can be pretty difficult. At medium range, they're going to dodge the other way, so it's pretty easy to predict. Or there's another situation 
If a player is under a lot of pressure because of the situation, they're more likely not to dodge. Unless, of course, they're more experienced players. It's the same thing for long range snipes. Right here, we get into a long range fight. So I throw down an ice bolt and I adjust for the juke and I end up hitting the ranger and he dies. And now we go after the cleric and I know he's under a lot of pressure because my ranger's shooting at him. So I just throw down an ice bolt and he ends up running into it because he's trying to walk towards the door. And finally, when you're chasing someone and they go around the corner, don't be afraid to pre-fire the corner. And this goes for all the other spells as well. Many people will repeat it to catch you off guard or to get some range damage in. And you never know when this might happen. He's gonna pop out. That was so obvious. Wow. The next spell we have is haste. Haste is not as good as it was. The movement speed was decreased to 5%, but you get 10% spell casting and action speed. How can haste help us hit more spells other than giving us extra movement speed? Well, you can use haste on mobs. This can not only help you space between enemies, it can be also used to distract them. Next is invis. Invis is great for all the reasons you know. You can juke players, switch mob aggro, use it to escape, and many other reasons. A lot of times when wizards go invis, they play aggressive. If we instead play passively, many players will waste their skills or get out of position. I wasn't sure if this rogue was running hide or cutthroat, so I haste and invised and decided to sit still. He ended up going invis and now I know he doesn't have cutthroat, now I can play a little bit more aggressive. Now let's talk about magic missiles. It can do a ton of damage, especially because it has a headshot multiplier, but it can be easily countered. Silence, shields, dodging are some of the ways that it can be countered. How can we make sure to get the most amount of damage and stay as safe as possible? If you have enough time, get to a doorway or a small corridor so the player has the least amount of room to dodge. If you can't do that, hop onto any ledge or object. This will let you have a higher chance to hit headshots while the enemies only have the chance to hit your legs doing minimal damage. But be careful of tanky classes like Cleric or Barbarian as they can take multiple missiles so get ready to move as soon as they get close. The next spell on the list is Slow. Slow is a very powerful spell. You can combine this with spells like Ice Bolt and Lightning Strike to constantly slow enemies. I made videos with a slow build like this and it's a ton of fun and would recommend to try this out to practice those spells. You can even pair slow with magic missiles to get easy headshots. And finally, chain lightning. Don't use it in solos. Since you can't chain it off of dead mob bodies, it's not good anymore. And that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I also have a playlist of other wizard guides. I will be making a full in-depth PvP guide for wizards, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if any of these tips were helpful, and also if you have tips of your own, drop them down in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video.